How are your lads? What's the crack? As of May 2024, according to the Nomura Research Institute, the number of empty houses in Japan has reached a record high of 11 million. That would literally house every single person in New York City and Paris. But you're probably thinking these houses are all run down, rotten, they're like messes that no one in the right mind would want to live in. But these are a few houses I just found on a Japanese listing site for less than $3,000. And they're all pretty big houses and for $3,000. Less than $3,000 like. That's a steal. But now, what's the catch? because no one gives away a house like that for less than 3,000 unless there is a catch. And let me tell you, there are a few. But first, let me tell you about this growing Japanese phenomenon known as Akia, why it's happening, and then you can tell me if you still think it's worth it or not. Abandoned homes in Japan are known as Akia. Aki meaning empty or vacant. Yeah, house. The term was usually reserved for abandoned derelict homes in rural areas of Japan, but now loads of Akia are showing up in big cities such as Tokyo, Osaka, and Hiroshima. Even if Tokyo has the lowest Akia rate of 2.6%, that's still 2.6% of 8.2 million housing units, which is 213,200 Akia in Tokyo alone. That's basically the size of Limerick in Ireland like. But in reality, a majority of the Akia in Japan are in more the rural parts of the country and are a result of one, an aging population and two, employment relocation. And in all fairness, nobody wants to make long commutes to work. So a majority of these young people left their small villages for one, the convenience of living closer to work, two, more job opportunities, and three, the hostile bustle and exciting life of the big city. We see this highlighted in Japanese movies such as Your Name showing the Japanese culture of small town life versus the opportunities of the big city. With the younger generation all moving to the big cities, the elder generations were left behind with no one to repopulate these areas because no one had a desire to live there. And this is what resulted in many areas of Japan being abandoned in the 21st century. And as a result of the lack of desire to live there, this in turn makes it impossible for the Japanese government to try and rejuvenate these aging rural communities. Which is actually really sad to me because I'm a country girl through and through. I don't like big cities. I like going into them for the day and I like leaving and going home and seeing nature and seeing all the greenery. And like, I just really like nature and I love the peace and quiet myself. So it actually makes me really sad thinking about all these beautiful areas and villages and towns in Japan just being absolutely abandoned like. Because I don't care about an hour commute. That doesn't bother me at all. That's like just living outside of London or living outside of Dublin. That doesn't bother me whatsoever. In fairness, that's actually fair handy because you can go into Tokyo for the day or go into any of the major cities and then you can leave at the end of the day and go home to the peace and quiet. That's great. So if you love Japanese culture, you live in an area or a part of the world and you struggle to find a home less than 500,000 US dollars and work remote, then why not just cut your losses and move to Japan and buy an Akia? Because if you look here and look at some of the houses listed at 30,000, if you move there, paid off a loan, 500 a month, you'd literally own the house in five years. It's 10 times cheaper than renting. Or would it? This could be only the beginning of the amount of money you have to pay because after renovations, taxes and national disaster standard requirements, you could be looking at another minimum 10,000 US dollars just to get started. So here are four things you need to consider before you even dream of buying an Akia and turning it into a yeah. One, renovation costs might be expensive. Many Akia in Japan that are under 15K could be in poor condition. So they might need a little bit of renovation work depending on how long they've been empty especially the essential basics like plumbing and electricity. This woman, Chani Japan, is one foreign person who fell victim to this problem and ended up having to pay, I imagine because she wasn't clear to us in the video, she probably had to pay a few extra thousand dollars on top of her original buying price. I imagine she probably had to pay at least 5,000 for the work she got done, so always remember, fork out for the license inspector and you might save yourself some heartache. This one really broke my heart when I learned about it, but don't forget taxes and broker's fees. The additional one-off fees and taxes can be sizable when buying a house in Japan. The first thing you gotta pay is property acquisition tax. This is a one-time tax that is levied when you buy a property. The tax rate varies depending on the type and value of the property and is 3% of the assessed value. That's not too bad, but then you have to pay fixed asset tax, title registration, stamp duty. And if you still live overseas when you buy the house, you have to pay a 10.21% withholding tax. It's all kind of starting to add up now, if you can see. 
there's only two things in life you can't escape, death and taxes. Then if this didn't upset you enough, you still have to pay the real estate agent at the Akia Bank who made your dream possible. Shout out to our friend Tomo-san for breaking down the price for us. Arigatou gozaimasu, Tomo-san. Oskare sama desu. And according to Tomo-san, it's gonna cost you at least an extra $5,000. And if I haven't deterred you yet, don't worry, I still have more. Before you even think about getting in a license inspector or crying over the potential taxes, you should first sit down and take a very close look at the contract and make sure there isn't any unnecessary or unwanted requirements. Three, weird contract clauses and requirements. For example, some contracts might require that you live in the house permanently, which wouldn't be a good idea if you're an expat or you plan to rent the house out in the future. Also, if you'd like to buy the property outright, make sure there's no rent to own and also have a good look and make sure there is no marriage, children or pet clauses and then you should be good to go. Some contracts might require you're married, some might require you have children and some might require that you are never allowed to have pets in the premises. So if you see any of them and you really like the property, just try to negotiate it. You might be able to work your way around it. This last one is extremely important, especially if you plan on moving to a country like Japan. It could have been tied into point one, but I wanted to give it its own section of the video. Natural disaster renovations and insurance costs. Japan's geographical location makes it a prime location for some of the largest and scariest natural disasters such as earthquakes, tsunami, typhoons and floods. So just make sure you don't buy any properties on reclaimed land, riverbanks, floodplains and any kind of soft soil or on the Honshu Island East Coast. As a result of the large number of natural disasters, Japan now has very rigorous building regulations. But this wasn't the case in the past and older buildings are more susceptible to earthquake damage than some buyers might realize. For example, it doesn't even have to be a massive earthquake, but this could result in your house becoming crooked or falling off its wooden beams and now your windows and doors can't open and they're a license inspector will be able to tell you one, if the house you're looking at is damaged and two, if it could be potentially damaged by an earthquake. So always remember to fork out for a license inspector and two, insurance. Earthquake insurance is paramount when you live in a country like Japan where you have on average 1500 earthquakes a year. Some of you might be thinking, I live on the west coast of the USA and I don't got earthquake insurance, so why the hell would I buy it in Japan? So sorry. <laughs> because if you buy an old Japanese wooden house, you are at higher risk of getting damage in an earthquake. So I'd rather have a guarantee of 40 to 70k than having to pay that out of my own pocket. So slap on another $600 for insurance. Okay, so after the inspector, broker, taxes and insurance, it's probably going to cost you an extra $7,000 minimum. And that's before you even consider renovations, which is still honestly a mad steal for me. Because if you look at the US, UK and Irish housing markets, I'd still be 1000% up for buying a nice place in Japan if I was an expat. But what do you think? Has the reality deteriorated you at all or would you still be up for it? All this information is readily available online and I'll use links to all the sites that I used if you're interested in fact checking. Or if you're interested in finding out more or the things that I didn't cover that you'd like to ask questions on, please leave them in the comments and if I can't get back to you on them, hopefully someone in the community can. Have a nice day!